What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Dinaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnia Reacts to Bill Wirtz. History of the entire world, I guess. Okay, now this is the apex, the alpha, the omega, the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the head honcho, the ultimate, the penultimate, the other cool sounding adjectives history video in the world with a whopping 122 million views and 4.7 million likes this one video trumps a lot of people's uh, youtube careers just one video and it's about history this makes it the greatest history video arguably of all time let's just get right into the video Stream the entire world, I guess. Hi, you're on a rock, floating in space. Pretty cool, huh? That's true. Some of it's water. Fuck it. Actually, most of it's water. I can't even get from here to there without buying a boat. It's sad. That's I'm a sad. plane. <laughs> I miss you. How did this happen? A long time ago, actually never, and also now, nothing is nowhere. When? Never. Makes sense, right? Like I said, it didn't happen. Nothing was never anywhere. That's why it's been everywhere. It's been so and everywhere, nowhere. you don't need a where. <laughs> you don't even need a when. That's how every it gets. Um. Forget this. I oh. want to be something. <laughs> Go somewhere. Do something. I want things to change. I want to invent time and space. And I know it's possible because everything is here and it probably already happened. I just don't know when to start. And that's exactly where it started. Oh, I paused it. I think there's a universe now. What's it made of? Corks and stuff. Ah, that's a thing. In a place. Don't like it? Try a new place. At a different time. Try to stick together because the world is going to get bigger. Okay, so we're starting off with the very beginning, the Big Bang, as I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of. Now, uh, a couple of problems with calling it the Big Bang that you all should know of. Uh, first and foremost, it really wasn't a bang. Because calling it a bang conjures up uh, different images in your brain. A lot of people think of it as being a random explosion, like a massive atomic explosion or something at the very beginning of the universe. Well, no, it really wasn't an explosion. It would be correct to call it the big quantum inflation event, which doesn't really roll off the tongue as well as, uh, you know, the Big Bang. But that's actually more precise. It was more of an inflation. So don't think of it really as... Um, your typical explosion that you would see in movies, for example. Uh, if you would take a balloon, I don't have a balloon right now, and <sighs> inflate it, that's closer to what it actually was than an actual explosion event. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, second thing is, how did, how did uh, scientists come to this idea? Well, as we've all heard of, the universe is expanding, true, by something known as dark uh, energy, not dark matter as you would see it being written here, but dark energy. And um, we notice the, the as the farther out you get into the universe, the faster and faster that expansion happens. So, and when we uh, peer out to the very edge of the universe with very strong uh, uh, telescopes, and we see the very you know beginning of the universe, because the light traveling all the way from the you know, very beginning of the universe to where we are now takes yeah, 14, around 14 billion years to, to I think it's more 13.8 billion years to reach our eyes. So scientists uh, came to the conclusion that if the universe is expanding and we know it is expanding and we can see the edge of the universe and calculate that the, the time it took the light to reach us is 14 uh, give or take 14 billion years uh that would make that that would mean when we put it on put it in reverse 14 billion years the universe would be closer and closer and closer and closer together until you would uh reach the point of a singularity basically so uh, they just ended up calling it the big bang ever since it started to you know i don't i can't recall who coined the term big bang but uh he was uh, on he had the right idea of a wrong application, I should say, uh, and that's we just stuck with the, with his name because it sounds cool, I guess. 
So that's how we know that the universe uh, did have a, a beginning, give or take 13.8 billion years ago, started with a big inflation event. And this is where you would get all four of the uh, uh, fundamental forces of nature. We know gravity, electromagnetism, weak and strong nuclear force, and the atoms, the matter that we see in the universe today, dark matter as well. This is where it all uh, came to be. And emptier. But it's not empty yet. It's still very full and about a jillion degrees. Great news, the quarks are now happily married in groups of three, called a proton or a neutron. And there's something else flying around too that wants to join They're in the camp because it's down too quarks. Great news, the protons and neutrons are now happily married to each other. Some of them even doubled up. Great news, the electrons have now joined in. Congratulations, the world is now a bunch of gas in space. But it's getting closer together. And it's getting closer together. And it's getting closer together. It's, it's a star. star. Yeah. New shit star. just got made. Some stars burn out and die. Bigger stars burn out and die with passion and make some brand new, way crazier shit. Okay, I should uh, also point out the initial stars, the, the oldest stars in the universe uh, were so incredibly massive because they had a lot of uh, material to basically uh, coalesce into a star. Now, when things get heavier and heavier, closer and closer together, uh, pressure rises and... Uh, eventually those elements start fusing into one another. It gets very, very hot. They start fusing. Hydrogen fuse, fuses into helium. We all, we've all we all heard of this. That's how you get a hydrogen bomb. That's how our sun makes uh, energy. So you have the first stars arising just like that. That's a fairly simplistic way to put it. But uh, they wouldn't last very long because they're so massive and heavy and, and very hot. They would uh, die out quickly. Now, some would die out in a, in a bang, as we saw at a supernova or a hypernova, if it's even bigger, for the hypergiant stars out there. But a lot of them didn't end up living long at all. Like, our, our sun still has a few billion years left in it before it will go into a red giant phase and uh, kill us all. Uh, that's assuming if we're still around by then. And, um, yeah, so, but those that are super heavy, super massive, their cores will, I'm not going to go through the very complex physics, what happens there, but their cores would uh, collapse in on, them, on themselves. Just just bear with me with this one. And they would become into black holes, as we know, because the, the gravity is so heavy that even light can't escape it. That's how heavy it is. That's why they're black holes. And these the oldest black holes that formed in the universe are the progenitors for galaxies, basically. In, in the middle of every large galaxy, a spiral galaxy, whenever you see one, or an oval galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole. It is supermassive because it is, it is indeed supermassive. Because when they, when they were around in the initial phases of the universe, there was still a lot of material they can swallow, basically. And you will see these massive quasars. The further out we look in the universe, we actually see massive quasars, which are basically black holes that are, ha have massive just towers of light coming out of them because they're swallowing up all that material. And uh, those are in the middle of every universe. And you would have material coalescing around it. There was, material would start orbiting around it because it's still just gravity at the end of the day. And you would have the first galaxies, as a matter of fact, forming around black holes. Black holes were important to the formation of of everything, basically, despite the fact that they're incredibly large, dangerous, and scary, if you think about it. Some supermassive black holes even have like 4 billion solar masses or 4 billion of our sun's masses. So ima imagine uh, a giant uh, wall of 4 billion stars. That's how much material fit inside that massive, supermassive black hole. Which allows newer, more interesting stars to be made and then die and explode into Even crazy space dust. So now stars have cool stuff around them, like rocks, ice, and funny clouds, which can mm -hmm. make some very interesting things. Like, Yes, so uh, after you would get a bunch of supernovae explosions, I think that's the plural, supernovae uh, explosions. That's basically when uh, stars start fusing heavier and heavier elements before the, you know... They explode basically from how much elements they're fusing in themselves in a fantastic explosion known as a supernova. And that, through supernova, a supernova is the only way of basically creating any heavier materials than than iron. Because when the star starts starts producing iron, it doesn't fuse anymore with that until it gets heavier and heavier and hotter and hotter and crazy hot. 
And that's when even heavier materials start to start to form, like we see gold, platinum, uh, uranium, for example, that has to be formed in a supernova explosion. And uh, that would actually uh, fertilize certain accretion disks around certain stars, like ours, for example, fertilize with many, many different uh, forms of elements. And those accretion disks would coalesce eventually through the power of gravity into planets, uh, basically, like we, like we see around our our sun. And that's how it all, you know, starts basically a solar system. Like this ball of flaming rocks, for example. Holy shit, we just got hit with another ball of flaming rocks. And it kind of made a mess. Which is... And, uh, Weather update. It's raining rocks from outer space. Weather update. Yeah. Those rocks might That's have had water inside the them, theory, and now there's yeah. hot steam in the sky. Weather update. Cooler temperatures today, and the floor is no longer lava. Weather update. It's raining. Severe flooding alert. The entire world is now an ocean. Volcano alert. That's land. There's nothing in the ocean. What? Something's alive in the ocean. Oh. Okay, so this is basically genesis of the, the, the abiogenesis, as I believe it, it would be known as. If I say genesis, that implies something religious. But um, regards to how life started, uh, if, we're talk if we're not talking religious uh, context, uh, we're talking scientifically, the best ideas we have at the moment, because we don't have anything concrete at the moment, we're still discovering uh, newer and newer things, but the best idea we have so far is that basically there was a there was soup a soup of various materials that eventually coalesced into what we know, now know as RNA. It was assumed RNA is older than DNA, and that uh, as time goes on further and further, you would get more and more complex RNA DNA sequences and. Uh, they would fart, start forming their own bodies. And of course, we don't know the exact process yet because we still haven't uh, figured it out entirely. Um, and you would have life form. And th through the process of evolution, eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells and uh, the other ones, archaeas, would get more and more uh, advanced over time. Let's just say they would develop better and better ways to survive. And that's basically how evolution went all the way from eukaryotic cells to... What we see today, complex life forms, that's the first uh, theory that we have or hypothesis really that we have at the moment uh, of abiogenesis. So it was like a, a soup of acid that, that, that created what we see today. That's one. The second uh, popular one is, is through panspermia. That's the idea that uh, a life on Earth started actually elsewhere. For example, Mars, and you would have a giant comet hit Mars, for example, it would splurge out material all the way to the Earth even because some impacts are that strong and they can send out material throughout outer space. Some of it landed on Earth. This is a hypothesis, of course, and uh, that which basically created the seeds to life, which is called, which is why it's called panspermia, okay? So it's the seed of, of life. Uh, and we have found like special materials that we wouldn't otherwise expect to find uh, in different uh, meteors, for example, which is interesting. So those are the two popular. Th I, I believe there's more than just that. Those are the two popular ones that I know of. But maybe the person watching this video right now will have a good idea. Maybe they can become a scientist one day and discover the truth. Oh, cool. Like a plant or an animal? No, a microscopic speck. It lives at the bottom of the ocean and eats chemical soup, which is being served hot and fresh, made from gnarly space ingredients left over from when it was raining rocks or whatever. Oh, yeah, and it can do that. It has secret instructions written inside itself telling it how to build another one of itself. So that's pretty nifty, I would say. Tired of living at the bottom of the ocean? Now you can eat sunlight. Using a revolutionary technique, you can convert sunlight into food. Taste the sun. Side effect, now there's oxygen everywhere and the sky's blue. Then the Earth might have been a snowball for a while, maybe even a couple of times. Yeah, uh, this is when our oxygen started forming on... Now, I forget what they're called, stromatolites, I believe, but you can find them off the coast of Australia. That's some of the oldest life forms in all of the Earth that you can still see today. They're like 3.5 billion years old which is, uh, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, uh, give or take, and life on Earth really started around 3.5 billion years old, you know, years ago, because the Earth was, for, for the longest part, pretty hellish. Uh, I believe it was called, like, the Hades period or something, like the first period of Earth's existence, because it was just hell on Earth, quite, quite literally, before you'd have an atmosphere, before you had water and rain. By the way, water came from comets. That's, that's just it. 
And um, as we see, life gets more and more complex over time. The sponges are, by the way, the oldest uh, complex form of eukaryotic life out there. So they're basically just a bunch of eukaryotic cells formed into a larger body, I guess. It's a sponge. It's a plant. It's a worm and some other types of weird, strange water bugs and strange fish. It's the Cambrian explosion. This is when life really wow, starts Wow, that's off. animals and stuff. But we're still in the ocean. Hey, can we go on land? No. Why? The sun is a deadly laser. It currently okay. is. <laughs> now the animals can go on land. Come on, animals. Let's go on land. Nope. Can't walk yet. And there's no food yet, so I don't care. Okay, will you learn to walk if there's plants up here? Maybe, said some bugs and fish. <laughs> Okay, so I can go on land, but I have to go back in the water to have babies. Learn to use an egg. I was already doing that. Use a stronger egg. Put water in it. Have a baby on land in an egg. Water is in the egg. Baby in the egg in the water in the egg. Works for me. Bye bye ocean. And now everything's huge, including bugs. Want to see a map of the land? Sure. Oh fuck! Now everything's dead. Just kidding, here are the survivors. Keep your eye on this one because it's about to become the dinosaurs. Here's another map of the land. Yeah, it broke apart. Yeah, so what many people don't know, a lot of dinosaurs didn't live in the same time periods as other dinosaurs. A lot of dinosaurs are much, much older than the other ones. Like, some dinosaurs have already went extinct while there were still other dinosaurs on Earth. So some are, yeah, older than the others. Like we hear the Jurassic period, but there was also a Triassic uh, period and they were basically the dominant life forms on earth at the time after uh, you would have a bunch of snowball earths which by the way almost destroyed all life on earth the snowball earth where base all of the earth was covered in ice only some very very hardy bacteria really survived very like tough cells survived after that extremophile cells survived and became the progenitors of all we see on earth uh, but uh, I'm going off topic again. Uh, also, what you saw there was uh, different continents. Now, we do know the continents shift a lot because the tectonic plates on Earth uh, shift a lot. And that's how we came to the situation we have nowadays. Not to mention that a lot of the Earth was still covered in large chunks of ice, which means some land was uh, available. To, that's why you would see... A, some some of the same dinosaur species were on this one, this part of the the earth as as, as this one, for example. So which means like uh, these two must have been like uh, a part of the same continent at one point, because a dinosaur can't, you know, really swim from one part to the other uh, and stay in the same form. There are some dinosaurs that, or some life on Earth that did try to swim and became whales. By the way, interesting story: whales used to be on the Earth. They used to be quite dominant, but then be, they became whales. And uh, yeah, the Earth will still be shifting. By the way, so eventually there's going to be another Pangaea. So Pangaea meaning like all of the Earth. Yeah, it was all like one continent. Now we have all these continents we see now, and it's going to be all the same once again. And I believe it was like a geologist that discovered when he puts South America and Africa together, he noticed like. They fit perfectly, and that's what, how we started getting the idea of tectonic plates. Don't worry about it. It does that all the time. Here comes a meteor. And the dinosaurs are gone. Yep. It's mammal time. Here come the mammals. Look at those breasts. Now they're going to dominate the world, and one of them just learned how to grab stuff and walk. No, like, walk like that and grab stuff at the same time and bang rocks together to make pointed rocks. Ouch. And set things on fire. Youch. And make crazy sounds with their voice. Which can mean different things. That's a human person. And now they're everywhere. Okay, so we have uh, the first intelligent life form on Earth. Now, back in the day when there was the dinosaurs, you know, in order to be dominant, you would have to be bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. Well, nowadays, the best creatures that survive in our time, the Holocene period or the Anthropocene period, as it's starting to get known as, as in we are changing the Earth so much that it's basically our period on Earth. Um, the, the creatures that survive the best nowadays are the smartest, most, most intelligent creatures, which back in the day, dinosaurs were quite, quite dumb. If you think about it, that's all they did was eat and sleep and roll around in their own filth. But uh, nowadays, you have to be very smart if you want to survive, including other creatures, not just humans. Like the the, the unsmart creatures, they just simply get uh, outclassed by the intelligent creatures like humans, for example. 
But also creatures such as uh, ravens, or for example, or crows are doing very well because they can survive in human-like environments, like cities, for example. They're very intelligent. I should know because I saw a crow once put a walnut on the, on the road and waited for a car to run it over. And once the car ran it over, the crow picked up, you know, the good parts of the nut. I was blown away by seeing that. So yeah, they're very intelligent. Also creatures that can survive toxic environments because we are polluting the earth a lot. The ones that, that can survive toxicity will be the survivors, such as cockroaches and catfish, for example. They can survive in toxic waters as well. Now, despite what people keep touting, humans did not evolve from apes, okay? Humans are apes right now as we speak. They are greater tailless apes, so to be more precise, we share a common ancestor with other of our cousins like gorillas, like bonobos, like chimpanzees. We share a common ancestor. Um, and we are our own species of primates, basically here on Earth. There were other hominids that weren't just, you know, humans. There were other hominids, such as Homo hannibalis, uh, Homo erectus, uh, Homo uh, neanderthalis, the neanderthals, Homo habitus even. There was like hobbit-like hominids that have basically all gone extinct or have assimilated genetically with Homo sapiens which is what we are nowadays. Like 2% of Europeans are actually Neanderthals. So uh, that's interesting. The, the rest have died out. The, that's We're all that's left of the hominids. Kind of sad if you think about it. But that also kind of means we don't have competition. Interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of we share a common ancestry and we are cousins to the apes. We're very similar to them genetically. Yes, it is proven we are similar. To them after all when you look at an ape and you look at the arms and everything they look exactly like this so not exactly but you know what i mean they look very similar they are the other most intelligent creatures on it but besides just humans apes are pretty intelligent themselves so um anyway let's just continue on humans have came to dominate the earth and what happened almost Ice age. what you can walk over here Cool. Correct. Not anymore. Well, I guess we're stuck here now. Let's review. There's people on the planet, and they're chasing their food. Fuck it. Time to plant some grass. Look at this. I control the food now. Now everyone will want to be my friend and live near me. Let's all build houses, except mine is bigger because I own the food. This is great. I wonder if anyone else is doing this. Tired of using gave rocks you for right everything? To all Use metal. <laughs> it's underground. Better farming was just invented in a sweet, dank valley right in between these two rivers. And the animals are helping. Guess what happens next? More food. And more people who came to buy the food. Now you need people to help make the food and keep track of the sales. Yeah, so this is when society really starts taking off. Now, for the largest part of human society, we were not agrarian workers that, that, that can produce a lot of human beings like, like we see today. We were hunter-gatherers, meaning we had to hunt and gather the food. It's in the name, so... Uh, and agriculture only really appeared around 10,000 years ago. And be behind that, we don't really know much about human beings in general because uh, they didn't leave uh, any writing of their society. They didn't, they didn't leave that many buildings of their society. Well, like, there's some parts of uh, eastern Turkey that are that still have like very ancient uh, human settlements and buildings. But before that, we're just hunter-gatherers. We'd hunt for food. We'd set up the most uh, simple of huts, for example, for a dwelling. We weren't there permanently. We'd, we would move around a lot, which is why you would see human beings all around the earth. They were chasing their food, and which led to the extinction of some animals, like for the mammoth, for example. Went extinct, not really because of the lack of an ice age, but because of us. There were no NGOs back then to, to stop the extinction of animals. We just hunted what we ever saw was food. And they, they still survived in an island north of Siberia, but they, it was hopeless for them by then. And other larger animals, like a large sloth, for example, we also hunted to extinction because we were so good at hunting. So we formed our, our brains really formed around the idea of hunting and gathering, not really about very highly complex societies as we see today 
which is why a human being can really only have a relationship or like an active relationship with between 150 people, which would, which would be give or take your small tr hunting tribe. That's how large they would ever get, 150, which is why we're, we cannot know everybody. We can only know a certain few small group of people because our brains evolved like that, not really to, to make agriculture. Now, before agriculture really took off, it is assumed humans were still experimenting with different plants to try to uh, genetically modify them so that they would become beneficial to them. That's probably what happened before the agricultural revolution. And of course, agriculture really pop propped up in uh, very fertile areas, specifically the Fertile Crescent from you know, Egypt uh, over, over through Israel to Syria and through Mesopotamia, Iraq today. That's where the first civilizations started propping up, but also in the Indus Valley in today's uh, Pakistan. And um, uh, where else? Also in China. Now you need houses for people to live in and people to make the houses. And now there's more people and they invent things, which makes things better. And more people come and there's more farming and more people to make more things for more people. And now there's business, money, writing, laws, power. Society. Coming soon to a dank river valley near you. <laughs> Meanwhile, out in the middle of nowhere, the horse is probably being tamed. Why is all my metal so lame and lumpy? Tired of using lame, sad metal? Introducing bronze. Made with special ingredient tin from the far lands of Tinland. Tin I don't know, my copper. dealer won't tell me where he gets it. Also, guess what? Egypt. Meanwhile, out in the middle of nowhere, they figured out how to put wheels on a horse. Now we're getting somewhere. Also, China. And did I mention China? <laughs> The Middle East is getting more complicated. Maybe because it's in the middle of the East. Knock, knock, or clop, clop. It's the people with the horses. And they made an empire. And then everyone else copied their horses. Greeks! Ah, oh, look, it must be the Greeks. Or a beta version of the Greeks. Let's check in with the Indus River Valley civilization. They're gone. Guess who's not gone? China. New arrivals in India. Maybe it's those horse people I was talking about. Or their cousins or something. And they wrote some hymns and mantras and stuff. You could make a religion out of this. There's the Bronze Age. Yep, Hinduism, the oldest continually practiced religion in the world. Their oldest script is like 4,000 years old. But uh, the, yeah, the Bronze Age collapsed. Brilliant. <laughs> so this is when you would have these very complex, very advanced societies for their time. Uh, get destroyed by a strange people group that came out of nowhere, known as the Sea People, generically. It's not known exactly where they come, came from. They really messed up the place, as you can see. Really, really messed it up. They ended the Bronze Age for, for the Middle East. Only to finally be defeated by the, the Egyptians, I believe. But the Egyptians were damaged so much that they really didn't recover after that. So <clears throat> it is assumed that perhaps the Sea Peoples were uh, a confederation of other people groups from... Europe or from North Africa, uh, maybe like Phoenicians that uh, left the, er the area a long time ago to settle other areas came came back because they knew the place existed. That's why they probably uh, got, you know, the federation of of uh, different uh, warring peoples together and attacked in unison. Maybe they held a grudge. Maybe they were spiteful about something. Who knows? Another um, theory, I believe that they came from the Balkans, which... Eh, Maybe, maybe not. I like the other theory more because those people that attacked them had to have known that something was there because otherwise why would they get get all those ships and all those weapons? They knew it was there, so they attacked them out of nowhere. So. It's collapsed. Now the Phoenicians can get down to business. Also, can we switch to a metal that's a little easier to find? Thanks. Look who came back to Israel. It's the 12 tribes of Israel. And they believe in God. Just one, though. He's got, like, a 10-step program. Here's yeah, that was uh, Yahweh. Hang on. Let's uh, go back here. The 12 tribes of... I'm not going to go through the entire Bible now. That would take forever. <laughs> but, yeah, the, according to the Bible, you know, the Old Testament, there were 12 tribes. They believed in one God, the Yahweh, as you see there, Y-H-W-H. -uh but the thing I wanted to get about... Some people call him Yahweh, but the... The better name for him was Ye, get this, Ho, Wa, Yehoah, or Jehovah. I'm pretty sure some have, have heard about them. So yeah, this is uh, when Judaism and therefore Christianity started to rise and therefore Islam later started to rise. Inspired by this one God. 
basically. Uh, though it is not the oldest monotheistic religion in the world, I believe Zoroastrianism is slightly older. The oldest continually practiced monotheistic uh, religion in the world, which basically stated that uh, there's good and evil, but at the end, good will prevail against the evil, which is the theme in a lot of uh, movies we see nowadays. And the Jews go through uh, a lot. They get enslaved by some Egyptians. They head back to. They were led back to Israel by Moses. And it took them 40 years because that's totally <laughs> – that's someone didn't have a sense of direction apparently. They, they could have just went on the coast and followed the coast back to Israel, but okay. But instead, he's going to have to part the sea <laughs> and then get lost in the Sinai for 40 years <laughs> And then make get back to the promised land, I guess, where God would keep telling him what to do and lead his society. That's kind of how it goes in the Bible. And uh, they would get messed up by the Assyrians. The, the Jews would get messed up by the Assyrians. Later on, the they would get uh, ethnically cleansed all around the place until the Persians conquered the area. As we know, the Persians were very influential and they told all the Jews, you know what, you can go back to your homeland. So in one sense, the Persians saved the Jews, but then the Romans came in and then Jesus came and Christianity started to spread like wildfire across the Roman Empire. And uh, that's how the, we have Christianity today. And then, then in the middle of the desert in Mecca from to Medina, technically, you would get Islam. God. All right, just one, though. He's got like a 10-step program. Here's some huge heads. Must be the Olmecs. The Phoenicians make some colonies. The Greeks copy their idea and make some colonies. The Phoenicians made a colony so big it makes colonies. Here comes the Assyrian Empire. Never mind, it's the Babylonian media. It's the Persian Empire. Wow, that's big. Ah, oh, the Buddha was just enlightened. Who's the Buddha? This guy, who sat under a tree for so long that he figured out how to ignore the fact that we're all dying. You can make a religion out of this. Oops, China just broke, but while it was breaking, Confucius was figuring out how to have good morals. Ah, the Greeks just had the idea of thinking about stuff. And right over here, Alexander just had the idea of conquering the entire Persian Empire. It's a great idea. He was great. And now he's dead. Hopefully, the rest of the gang will be able to share the empire evenly between them. Knock knock, it's Chandra Gupta. He says, get the hell out of here. Will you get the hell out of here if I give you 500 elephants? Okay, thanks, bye. Time to conquer all of India. Most of it. Or most of India. But what about this part? That's the Tamil kings. No one conquers the Tamil kings. Who are the merchants? Merchants, probably. And they've got spices. Who would like to buy the spices? Me, said the Arabians, swiftly buying it and selling it to the rest of the world. Hey, China put itself back together again with good morals as their main philosophy. Actually, they have three main philosophies. Out here, of course, nomads run wild and free, yeah. and they would like to ransack your city. Let's check the Greekification levels of the Greekified kingdoms. Greekification overload. Bye, said the Parthians. Bye, said the Jews. Hi, said the Parthians, taking over the entire place. Hey, said the Romans, eating the entire Mediterranean for breakfast. Thanks for invading our homeland, said the Jews, who were starting to get tired of people invading their homeland. Hi, everything's great, said some guy who seems to be getting very popular and is then arrested and killed for being too popular, which only makes him more popular. You can make a religion out of this. Want silk? Now you can buy it from China. They just made a brand new road to the world. Or you can get their own water. Sick, new trade routes, said India, accidentally spreading their religion to the entire southeast. Mm, that's a good place for an epic trading kingdom. There goes Buddhism traveling up the Silk Road. I wonder if it'll reach China before it collapses again. Remember the Persian Empire? Yep, said the Persians, making a new one. Aksum is getting so powerful they would like to build a long stick. Has anyone populated Madagascar yet? Let's do it together. China's home again. Then it broke again. TLDR Still can't cross the Sahara Desert? Try camels. Hell yeah, now we got business said the Ghana Empire, selling lots of gold and slaves. Hi, I live in the Roman Empire, and I was wondering, is loving Jesus legal yet? No. Actually, okay, sure, said Constantine, moving the capital way over here to be closer to his main rival. Don't worry about Rome, it won't fall. It's the golden age of India. There's the Gupta Empire, not Chandra Gupta, just Gupta. First name Chandra, the first. Guess who's in Rome? Barbarians. What's a barbarian? Non-Romans, said the Romans, being invaded by non-Romans. R.I.P. Roman Empire. Or actually just half of it. The other half is just fine. But it's not in Rome anymore, so let's give it a new name. The Mayans have figured out the stars. Oh, and here's a huge city. Population everyone. 
The Gok Turks have taken over the entire Eurasian steppe. Great job, Gok Turks. How's India? Broken. How's China? Back together. How's those trading kingdoms? Bigger and there's more of them. Korea has three kingdoms. Japan has a kingdom. It's the Sunrise Kingdom. Deep in the Arabian desert, on the top of a mountain, the real god whispers in Muhammad's ear. So he goes down to the cube where everyone worships gods, and he tells them their gods are all fake. And everyone got so mad at him that he had to leave town and go to a different town. You can make a religion out of this, and maybe conquer the world as well. Okay, that, a lot has happened <laughs> since then. So, a bunch of nomads conquering places, a bunch of barbarians destroying civilizations. You get how it goes. Uh, then Islam starts to rise, starts to spread, and uh, here we are <laughs> at this point in time. Now, regarding a few things about uh, Islam, you saw you saw the cube. Uh, that's the Kaaba. I believe that just means cube in Arabic. Uh, there was actually another one, which I figured out recently. That was not the only one. There was apparently another one in Yemen, ar ar around today's Yemen. Uh, which uh, I believe Muhammad commanded that it be destroyed. So that's the thing. And yes, uh, that that was a, a pagan thing, walking around the Kaaba. That, that, that was a pagan thing, which uh, when people saw Muhammad doing as well, he went around the thing. Initial Muslims were not happy about that. It's, you know, going back and forth from one hill to the other, then walking around the, the, the Kaaba. They, they thought that was, no, no, we, we're new Muslims. You know, we, we don't do that. Uh, pagan stuff but Muhammad basically said oh don't worry it's fine you can do it and they started doing it <laughs> that's that that's it <laughs> that's how uh, that happened and Mecca became the center of, of Islam basically and now when looking at the Kaaba most likely those were influenced by Zoroastrian temples if you look up Zoroastrian cube Iran for example you would see very similar looking cubes so those pagans that built those cubes most likely were influenced by Zoroastrian uh, architecture and then Islam took over and the Roman Empire is long gone but somehow the Pope is still the Pope plus there's new kingdoms all over Europe I wonder if there's room for Moors here's all the wisdom in a house it's the Baghdad house of wisdom just in time for the Islamic golden age oh, yeah. let's bring stuff to the coast and also just a fun fact that I figured out recently the reason M Muslims have just you know the beard without the mustache was Muhammad trying to do the opposite of what the Zoroastrians were doing. Because when he met some Zoroastrians, they had just mustaches, no beards. And he was like, yeah, I kind of don't like that. Uh, uh, we need to think of something else. How about just do the opposite? And that's how that started. So that's why Muslims wear beards. Just because he most likely saw some Zoroastrians with mustaches. He wanted to, for Muslims to differentiate themselves from others so that's why they have that just the beard not the mustache sell it and become the swahili on the swahili coast said the swahili on the swahili coast remember this tiny space you have to go through to get from here to there someone owns that now want to get enlightened in the middle of nowhere the franks have the biggest kingdom in europe and the pope is so proud that he invites the king over for christmas surprise you're the new roman emperor said the pope pretending to still be part of the roman empire then the Franks broke their kingdom into what will later be called France and not France. The Northerners, or just Norse if you don't have much time, are exploring. They go north, from the north to the northern north, and they find some land, two types of land, and they name them accordingly. They also invade some other places and get called many names, such as Vikings. There's, Yeah, uh, regarding the Vikings, yeah. Uh, now, it, the Vikings weren't a people group, as many <laughs> movies like to make it out to be. They were not one people. Definitely, there are many different people groups of Vikings, like there were the Danish, the Norwegians, and the Swedish. The Danes tended to be the raiders, the attackers. Uh, the Norwegians tended to be the discoverers. Basically, they were the ones who discovered Iceland, Greenland, and the New World before anyone else in all the way back in 1000 AD. Uh, and the Swedes were kind of the, the traders. They they traded with other different people groups and got rich. <laughs> After they figured out they can make a lot more money through trading, you know, they stopped raiding because you can die if you try to raid. And you won't die if you try to trade. Makes sense. Right? So, and Fara Evi King said in the Nordic language would mean go on a journey, basically. Uh, so calling them a Viking, was, there were just a few of them that went on a Viking, and uh, most people, most of the most people stayed at home, worked on the farmland, got ruled by jarls. If you played Skyrim, the jarls were kind of their rulers. Uh, those were that was Nordic life. Some 
went on a Viking or raided other lands or either discovered other lands or traded with others in their nice, cool longboats. Yes, some of them were absolutely merciless. That's without a doubt. <laughs> uh, so, and they were the ones that... Uh, got in a scuffle a lot with the Anglo-Saxons and took over parts. Even some of them made it all the way to Constantinople. Interesting. Some of them intermingled with the Slavs. And uh, we'll see how that all ends. It's the Rus, the Kievan Rus. Are they Vikings? I don't think so, said the Kievan Rus. Okay, fair enough. The Pope is ready to make some more emperors of the Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire. It's actually Germany, but don't worry about it. New kingdoms. Neither the Holy nor Roman. Which brand would you like? Mine's better. Mine's better. Mine's better. Time to conquer England, said William. It's a bird, it's a plane. It's the Seljuk Turks, <laughs> said the Byzantine Empire, who's getting so small it almost doesn't exist anymore. We need help. They need help, so they call the Pope. Hey, Pope, can you help us get rid of the Seljuks? Maybe take back the Holy Land on the way? Come on, I know you want to take back the Holy Land. Yes, I do actually want to do that. Let's do a crusade. Crusade! They did many crusades, some of which almost didn't fail, but at least the Italians got some sweet trade. Nine of them. Goodbye, Mayans. Hello, Toltecs. Goodbye, Toltecs. Hello, Mississippi. Look at those mounds. There's the Pueblo. I always wondered how to build a town and a cliff. Guess who's here? Come here. Where? Here. And Pagan is there. Vietnam unconquered itself, Korea just became itself, and Japan is so addicted to art that the military might have to take over the government. China just invented bombs and typing. And the Mongols just invaded most of the universe. Nice going, Genghis. I bet that will last a long time. Some of the Islamic Turks were unaffected by the Mongol invasions because they were busy invading India. Is it Tonga time? I think it's Tonga time. I just found out where the Swahili gets all their gold. Look at this Chad. Means lake. There's an empire there. Right in the middle of Chad. The king of Mali is so rich he's going on tour to let everyone know. Wow, that guy's rich, everyone said. The Christians are doing a great job. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he was so rich and he gave away so much gold that it caused such a high inflation rate in, in certain cities that it, he kind of messed up the economy. That's how rich he was. Now, many people would calculate that nowadays he would be worth around $400 billion. But then again, back in the day, that was more money than there was in the entire world. So how rich he actually was is up to debate, but he was definitely rich for his time. The richest person definitely for his time. Some other people were also rich, like uh, Julius Caesar was very freaking rich. Uh, a lot of Roman empires, Roman emperors were super rich uh, as well. Let's just carry on. Reconquering Iberia, which will soon be called Spain and not Spain. Please remain Christian. We will check in later to see if you're still Christian when you least expect. Whoops, half of Europe just died. China's back, yay! Hey, come here, time to share. New kingdoms here and there. Oh, look who controls all the islands. It's the Mahajapit. Majahapit. Mapajahit. Mahapajit. Mapajahit. Majapahit. Oh, Italy's really rich. Time for them to care a lot about art and the ancient classics. It's kind of like a rebirth. Here's a printer, let's make books. So you think you can conquer the Byzantine Empire? Yep, said the Ottoman Turks. Nice job, Ottoman Turks. Oops, you missed a spot. Don't forget to ban Europe from the Indian spice trade. What? That's bullshit, said Portugal, spiceless. Well, I guess we'll have to find another way to India. And that they did. Wait, said Christopher Columbus, probably smoking crack. If the world is round, let's go this way to India. No, don't worry, we already got this, said Portugal. So Chris goes to Spain. Hey, Spain, wanna hire me to find India by going around back of the world? No, please, no, please, no, please. Okay. So he sails into the ocean, and discovers more ocean, and then discovers the Indies, and Japan. Let's draw a line to decide who gets which half of the world. The Aztec and Inca empires are off to a great start. I wonder if they know that Europe just discovered their continent. The Habsburgs are marrying into so many royal families, they might have to start marrying each other. Move over, Lithuania. Here comes Moscow. Ivan wants to make Russia great again. Move over, Timurids. Maybe go invade India or something. Persia just made Persia Persian again. Let's make it the other kind of Islam. The one where we thought the first guy should have been the other guy. Hey, Christians, do you sin? Now you can buy your way out of hell. That's bullshit. This whole thing is bullshit. That's a scam. Fuck the church. Here's 95 reasons why, said Martin Luther in his new book, which might have accidentally started the Protestant Reformation. You know what would be magnificent, said Suleiman wearing an onion hat? What if the Ottoman Empire was really big, which it is now? What if Russia was big, said Ivan, trying not to be terrible? Portugal had a dream that they controlled the entire Indian Ocean, including the spice trade. And then that dream was real. And Spain realized that this is not India, but they pillaged it anyway. Damn, said England and France. We gotta start pillaging some stuff. Then the Dutch revolt and all the hipsters move to Amsterdam. Damn, said Amsterdam. We gotta start pillaging some stuff. <laughs> Question one, can you get to India through Europe, North America? No, but at least there's beaver. Question two, steal the spice trade. That's not a question, but the Dutch did it anyway. Sugar. 
Guess where all the sugar's made? In Brazil. Stolen. In the Caribbean. And it's so goddamn profitable, you might forget to not do slavery. The next thing on Russia's to-do list is to get bigger. Britain and France are having a friendly discussion about who should control the entire world. More specifically, Ohio. Then it escalates into a seven-year discussion, giving Prussia a chance to show Austria who's boss. But what about Britain and, and France? They did, did they figure out who's boss? Yes, they did. It's Britain. Guess who's broke? Also Britain. So they start taxing the hell out of America. Mm. Fuck you, says America, declaring their independence and fighting for it. And France helps them win. Now France is broke. And Britain will have to send their prisoners to a different continent. Wait, if France is broke, why do the king and queen still wear such fancy dresses? Let's overthrow the palace and cut all their heads off, said Robespierre, cutting everybody's head off until someone eventually got mad and cut his head off. You can make a relit- No, don't. Haiti is starting to they like the idea did. of a revolution, <laughs> especially the slaves, who free themselves by killing their masters. Why didn't we think of this before? Wait, who's in charge of France now? said Napoleon, trying to take over Europe. Luckily, they banished him to an island. But he came back. Luckily, they banished him to another island. There goes Latin America, becoming independent in the Latin American Wars of Independence. Britain just figured out how to turn steam into power, so now they can make many different types of machines and factories with machines in them, so they can make a lot of products real fast. Then they invent some trains, and conquer India, and maybe put some trains there. Hey, China, said Britain, buy stuff from us. Nah, dude, we already got everything, says China. So Britain tried to get them addicted to opium, which worked, actually. But then China made it illegal and dumped it all into the sea. So Britain threw a hissy fit and made them open up five cities and give them an island. Britain and Russia are playing a game where they try to stop each other from conquering Afghanistan. Also, the Sultan of Oman lives in Zanzibar now. That's just where he lives. India just had a revolution, and they would like to govern themselves now. Nope, said Britain, governing them even harder than before. Technology is about to go crazy. The United States finally figured out whether slavery is good or bad. It's bad, they decided. And then they continued manifesting their destiny, which is to kill the rest of the natives and take their land and maybe kick out the Mexicans too. I know, let's rape Africa, said Europe, scrambling to see who could rape it the fastest. They never got Ethiopia. Britain and France are still hungry. Italy did at the end. <laughs> the United States ran out of destiny to manifest, so they're looking for more. Hi, Cuba. Wait, Spain controls Cuba. Well, blame something on them and go to war. What should we blame on Spain? <laughs> Let's blame the main on Spain. So they blame the main on Spain. Now we're in business. To celebrate, they kick Panama out of Panama and make a canal, connecting the two oceans. Britain just found oil in the Middle East. It makes cars go. China is so tired of being bossed around <laughs> that they delete their old government and make a new, stronger government, which is accidentally weaker and controlled by a guy from the previous government. Europe hasn't had a war since the last war, so they start World War I. Look at those guns. It's going to be a great war. So great we won't need a second one. After it's over, they blame Germany. Russia went on strike and the workers overthrew the government. Now everyone's paycheck is the same. Communism in the Soviet Union. Except the Arabs worked for the government. Helps. Now the Ottoman Empire is gone, so we can give the Jewish people a place to live. Hopefully the Arabs won't mind. Let's cut the cake, said Sykes and Picot, carving up the remains of the not-so-Ottoman anymore empire. Except Turkey, Turkey makes a brand new Turkey. And then the Saudis conquer Arabia. It just seemed like the right thing to do. Hello? Yes, it's the 1920s calling. Let's get in the car and drive to a party and listen to jazz on the radio and go to the movies. The economy's great and it'll probably be great forever. Just kidding. Germany's back featuring Hitler, the angry mustache model, and he's mad at the Jews for existing. Japan is finally conquering the East, and they're so excited they raped Nanking way too hard, they should probably just deny it. Hitler's out of control, so the international community tackles him and tries to explain why killing all the Jews is a bad idea, but he kills himself before they could explain it to him. That's World War II. Bonus round, Pacific Showdown. United States versus Japan. Fight. Fight. Finish him. Let's unite all the nations and have some world peace. Seems legit. Hi, I'm Gandhi, and if Britain doesn't get the hell out of India, I'm going to starve myself in public. Wow, that worked. I can't Bonus, that now works. there's Pakistan. Actually, two Pakistans. One of them could be Bangladesh later. The Jews and the Arabs finally figured out which one of them should live in the Holy Land. Me, they both said at the same time. Let's divide up the land so everyone's happy. Psych, they both get angrier. Look out, China. There's a new China in China. What's on the menu? Communism. No thanks, said the other China, escaping to an island. I wonder which one is the real China. There's the Korean War, Korea versus Korea. Nobody wins, then it's on pause forever. Let's meet the sponsors. Oh, it's the two global superpowers. They're having a friendly debate over which economic system is good and which one is an evil virus of Satan. And they both have atom bombs. Fight! Wait, no, that will be the end of the world. Let's just keep it cool and spy on each other instead. And make sure we have enough atom bombs. I'll race you to Killed space. each other. <laughs> now let's make some more countries fight themselves. Europe is tired of pillaging other continents, and the continents they were pillaging are tired of being pillaged. So here's a new map with new countries. Now you can't tell who they're being pillaged by. The United States finally decided whether racism is good or bad. They decided it's bad, and the world agrees. South Africa might need another minute to think about it. Let's check the world population. Whoa. Okay. Technology's better too, that might keep happening. The Soviet Union decides to relax a little and accidentally falls apart. 
Europe makes a union, so now they can all use the same money. Except Britain, because they don't feel like it. Let's check the mail. Surprise, it's on the computer. Whoops, someone just attacked America. I bet they'll remember that. Phone call. Surprise, it's in your pocket. Want to learn everything? Surprise, it's on the computer. Now your phone's a computer, which is in your pocket. Whoops, the economy just crashed. Don't worry, the big banks won't fail, because they're not supposed to. Surprise, flying robots with bombs. Want to print a brain? Some people have no friends. Some people have no food. The globe is warming. And the ocean is full of plastic. Let's save the planet, said everybody, not knowing how. Let's invent a thing inventor, said the thing inventor inventor after being invented by a thing inventor. That's pretty cool. By the way, where the hell are we? <laughs> okay. So that is uh, History of the Entire World, I guess. Now that was just an awesome video. I know I... Uh, didn't talk much there towards the end because I thought I was like, oh, man, I'm talking a bit too much. So let's just uh, allow the video to play a bit. But I would have a lot of things to say about everything, basically. But I talk already a lot about uh, countries and history on my channel already. So the, I, didn't, I didn't feel a need to repeat myself there yet again with the whole countries forming and everything. I'll get to that eventually on, on my channel. But this was uh, an amazing video. The first time I saw this, I was like, whew. This is an awesome video. That That's literally all I feel about this video. It's awesome. I wish he will do another one. I really do wish that he, he will do it. But that's all up to him. Anyway, that's the end of this video. So I'll thank you all for watching. Take care.